For the first time, an area family is speaking publicly about their dog's death. A local animal shelter euthanized, then decapitated their dog. It sounds gruesome, and we must warn you, many parts of this story you may find disturbing. Tonight News 4 investigator Lauren Traeger works to get answers for the family who says they have gotten nothing but silence from St. Louis County. She's just an amazing and loving dog. Erin Bolfin says Daisy was just the perfect rescue dog for their family. She came running up to us and um, with her, her goofy smile and her underbite sticking out and, and we knew right away she was for us. Fast friends with their youngest daughter. She was in love with her from the get go and they were inseparable. But in December 2019, Erin says Daisy got a little protective of a toy. My daughter uh, bent down to hand the toy to her because she thought she had kicked it out of the way. And as she was trying to give it back to Daisy, Daisy jumped up and bit her on the nose. Aaron says they knew Daisy meant no harm and had no worries about her being around their daughter again. But because there was an injury, Aaron contacted St. Louis County Animal Care and Control, who said they would have to bring Daisy in to quarantine. The woman he talked to even said, you know, you're welcome to bring your family in to visit her. She'll be OK. We'll take good care of her. But the very next day, they learned instead Daisy could quarantine at home. So Aaron rushed to get her, only to learn Daisy was dead. There was no explanation as to why. They, the woman just came up and said she's gone. She was devastated, but the shock turned to anger. Within the same you know, hour or so, they just took her back, euthanized her, and decapitated her. So it's disgusting. The decapitation, the county has said, necessary to test for rabies. She wasn't vicious. She wasn't violent or aggressive toward our children at all before this. So it was a one-time incident, and we were just trying to do what we needed to do. We never wanted anything like this to happen to Daisy. Ever since, Erin has wanted answers. At any point in time, have you ever gotten as much as an apology? No, not at all. They've been very very aggressive toward us. County officials have claimed her husband authorized the euthanasia, something he adamantly denies. They basically tried to blame my husband for everything and it sounds like somebody did something that they weren't supposed to do and now they're trying to do everything they can, you know, to put the blame on someone else, even if it's us. It certainly has been an issue in the past. A 2019 audit of the county shelter found officials had been fudging numbers, making it appear as if many more owners had requested euthanasia. The shelter vowed changes, complying with multiple recommendations in the audit. But there's been other issues as recently as this year. I'm at a loss as to what to do. In July, News 4 told you about the shelter losing a dog they were supposed to be caring for. Your job is to control animals and now mine is gone. Harley hasn't been found since. But also an issue in the past, how the county has put dogs down. News 4 has confirmed that until just a few months ago, the county used a method of euthanasia called a cardiac stick, which is an injection directly into an animal's heart. Embroiled in a lawsuit now, Aaron says the county will not tell her how exactly Daisy died, and that's why she's speaking out now. You're not getting any answers. No, they refuse to tell us whether or not they sedated her before they um, euthanized her and what we've what I've read from their statements is that they were just in a really big hurry to get it done. Personally, I would never want to do it for an animal that was totally awake. Veterinarian Dr. Teresa Garden wasn't affiliated with Daisy's case at all, but explained to us that in private practice, heart sticks are almost never used. She puts animals under heavy sedation before administering an IV drug. Without sedation, I would think that like I say, they could always struggle and they might feel the effects of the drug. So I would think there could be perhaps some degree of discomfort. News 4 wanted to talk with officials in charge of St. Louis County Animal Care and Control. There's been changes in leadership here, but at the very top, Dr. Faisal Khan, head of the Department of Public Health. Through a spokesperson, we were repeatedly told we could not have an interview. Specific to Daisy, they would only say, quote, given that this is a pending legal matter, we have no comment at this time. 
But when we asked about their euthanasia practices in general, a spokesperson wrote, quote, until May 2021, we euthanized animals with a heart stick injection. They were sedated prior to the procedure. We stopped doing heart sticks as of May 2021. Further adding, quote, ACC has always sedated prior to a heart stick. We're in the process. We asked County Executive Sam Page about it Monday, who said he had full confidence in the shelter staff, especially after the audit. We're going to implement all of those policies policy changes, which include um, the way we take care of animals, the euthanasia, euthanasia rate, and, um, um, and the policies for euthanizing. We're reviewing all of those. I do not think this is an isolated incident. But Aaron still doesn't understand why the county won't just give them proof of what happened to Daisy. It's just cruelty. She believes more changes must be made at the county's animal care and control. Our goal is just to to make sure that no animals suffer and that no other families have to be traumatized like ours. Well, you might still have questions about why Daisy was decapitated. Well, state law requires vets to send in brain tissue samples of an animal that might have rabies in the event they have to kill it. But county law actually requires the county shelter to keep the animal alive and observe it for 10 days. So Aaron, of course, argues there was absolutely no need to euthanize Daisy or test her brain tissue. It's certainly a very difficult issue all around. We are still waiting for records to come back from the county. And of course, we will continue to follow this issue. I'm Lauren Traeger, News 4 Investigates.